the UN Refugee Agency, it's UNHCR. Just over a year ago, they had their first global refugee forum where participants were invited to make pledges to support the rollout of the Global Compact for Refugees. And IID pledged um, at, at that time to do more research on refugees. And as we made that official pledge, we were invited to give an update to member states on what we had been doing and how we were making good on that pledge. So I was able to address a member state briefing in Geneva remotely and talk about our research that got going um, last year, 2020, in, in February 2020, that is comparing um, the livelihoods and well-being of refugees and internally displaced people in camps with those in urban areas, with a view to showing how urban areas could be much better places for many of those displaced people. So I was able to give that update on our research to the member states and at the time draw attention to a film that one of our partners had just made. In Nairobi there are tens of thousands of refugees. Their voices are very rarely heard and we were aware from our partners that the Covid pandemic is having a particularly difficult impact on refugees. Our partners put together a really moving film in which they interviewed refugees in Matare, in an informal settlement. Lakini kutoka corona ikuje, isilili yako lockdown. Na huko ndo sasingini tunayenda kufanya vibaruwa za hoteli. Sasa hakuna kuingia huko. Inabidi usurvive hapa. Kituyo yote, ukipata mia, unaipigia budget. Munakula la nini, milmoja kwa siku. work in Haiti was a bit different because it was based on collecting a huge archive of planning materials, so community-led planning materials in the aftermath of the Port-au-Prince earthquake in Haiti, which killed hundreds of thousands of people and really destroyed large swathes of Port-au-Prince. There is now a wealth of really useful community data um, that's saved as an archive on IID's website. The authors really wanted these resources to be available so that people could start thinking about how you teach community-led planning in low-income cities affected by disasters or, or um, large-scale displacements. IID is leading a quite large research project in four countries that's comparing the well-being and livelihoods of displaced people in camps with those in urban areas. The project supports comparative research across some of the world's longest standing and best known protracted displacement situations from Afghanistan to Kenya and Ethiopia all the way to Jordan. Um, the goal of the project is to compare how protracted displacement populations, how they're faring when they're living in camp settings compared to urban settings. And what we want is to produce evidence that shows how different actors can support the best strategies towards self-reliance, well-being, livelihoods so that it benefits not just the displaced but also the communities around them. The UN Secretary General's high-level panel on IDPs, on internally displaced people, I teamed up with a colleague from UN Habitat and another colleague from the Joint Internal Displacement Profiling Service. We put together a submission talking through how urban expertise, so the expertise of planners, can help contribute to making cities safer, more welcoming for displaced people. And we're now organising a series of consultations for the panel members with mayors from around the world, leading up to a high-level event with mayors, with the panel members, to really talk about how you respond to displacement in urban areas. <laughs>